Malcolm Jenkins is one of the more accomplished human beings in the NFL. He's a two-time Super Bowl champ, 12 years, multiple Pro Bowls. He's now a filmmaker uh, and uh, has given Tom Brady more than his share of trouble. He is joining us live to add to his resume. I am told Malcolm is wearing a sports jacket that he made. Come on, tell me, could you give some of us a break in life? What you, You're literally a, you're a designer? Yeah, you know, Demari Seville is my company. I've, I've had it for a while now. It's, uh, you know, I, I enjoy looking nice, and I figure why not design my own clothes? <laughs> yeah, I want to look nice, too. I can't design my own stuff. Uh, so hey. You faced Brady in a Super Bowl and beat him. Uh, and he mm-hmm. he had you know that was a pretty good day for Tom. He lost the game, but had good. They didn't. Only, I think it was only one punt in that Super Bowl. And you faced him three times this year. So if mm-hmm. I if you had to tell a young safety who had never Malcolm faced Tom, what would you tell him? What would it be the little two or three secrets you'd tell him to have any success against him? Well, I think you you got to know at all times he's reading the safeties. You know he he is very much a a, a advantage quarterback. So if you give him a look. He's going to do what's most advan- you know, what's most advantageous for his defense. So if you're in split safety, you can be ready to get a run. If you're in a down safety, you know he's going to probably pass it. Uh, if you've got open gaps in the run and he sees it, you know he'll do that. And, and what he'll do is he'll wait, you know, in his, in his hard count, he'll wait in the, in the shot clock to see if you can tip that or not because he always wants to know where you are. They're going to start with a running back and put him out at a receiver and motion him back in just to see if you're a man to man. So if you can play with those kind of rules, if you know what he's looking at, you can slow his, his read down just a little bit post snap. Uh, if you can confuse him with the post snap, with a pre-snap look, but that's going to take a coordination, not only from the safety, but from your linebackers, from your D line, uh, everybody's got to be on the same page. Otherwise he'll see what's out of place and know what you're in. You know, it's interesting. Um, John Elway, Mahomes and Brady, this is really a weird thing to say, but, I always feel like if Aaron Rodgers struggles earlier, throws a pick, his body language changes. He's not quite as aggressive. Elway, Mahomes, and Brady, I don't know. They could have four picks. It's just the way they, they yeah. don't care. So I, Now, that's just me as an observer of football. But I'm watching Tommy throw three picks in the second half against Green Bay. He couldn't give a rip. You've had some success against him. Is there a, I don't know if it's relentlessness, I mean, when, when you watch Tommy, do you ever feel like in a game you've got his number? Or, or is it a chess match for three and a half hours? Well, I think it's a chess match for, for three and a half hours. I think you, Tom, is, you, we've seen games where he's gotten behind or teams have gotten after him. Even us with the Saints, we got after him and, and blew him out one time this year. And in that game, you saw you didn't see him you know, press. And, and never did we feel like, okay, we got control of this. You, you know that he has that gear and because he's so persistent that at any point in time, if you let your guard down or let him figure you out, he will come back and make those plays. So it's one of those things you've got to be, you know, always one step, two step, three steps ahead for the entire game because he is, you know, him being frustrated at an interception is not going to stop him from executing his offense uh, if you allow it. Now you face Mahomes as well. You had some success against Mahomes. Did you feel like when you face Patrick, okay, he's really talented, but I can fool him a little more. I can manipulate him a little more because of my age and experience advantage. No, you know what? With, with Patrick, it, it's it's the opposite. You never know what he's going to do. So with Tom, you know he's going to be three yards behind the line, behind the center, and you know he's going to be. Patrick Mahomes, they're running shovel passes. Their play design is crazy. They got motions all over the place. They got speed all over the place. And even when you get to him, he's elusive enough to either scramble for a first down or make some guys miss. And once you get off schedule, those plays are very, very hard to defend. And that's so you're you're really thinking about being more disciplined when you play a quarterback like Pat Mahomes. Everybody's got to win their matchups. Everybody's got to stay home. You've got to know some of the tips and keys. And then he's just going to you have to be ready for him to make plays. He's throwing, you know, the angles at which he throws the ball are crazy. You don't see him anywhere else. And he's just going to make plays and you have to survive those. Um, so it's definitely a different approach for both quarterbacks. So 39 players on both teams have played in a Super Bowl. That means more than half have not. So I want you to go back to your Super Bowl. Even for a veteran, a cagey guy like you, when you come out of that tunnel, uh, Bill Romanowski once told me, he was in a bunch of them, he said, that first quarter I was in the Super Bowl, I don't remember it. 
He goes, it's just flash bulbs. I lost myself, and all I know, I was in the third series. He goes, I don't even know what happened. So you tell me, you know, we got Tampa's got a lot of guys who have never been in a Super Bowl, Malcolm. Were you a little on edge first quarter? So uh, the last time I was in the Super Bowl was my second time around. So I was a little bit, uh, you know, I understood what was going into it. And, and that's what it comes down to. Can you block out? the the moment right the all of the lights and the pressure that surrounds this game and focus on the game it's the same game that you've been playing so when when i was in my last super bowl those first three series while they're going to be you know you're 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 anxious you're excited it's going to go fast but i was able to kind of slow the game down my first time those first few drives i don't know what happened like you just get out there stuff's moving you come back you drink some water and then you're looking at the, (laughs) the pages you don't even you don't even remember the plays, you know, and, and so it's like, who can, so I think the Tampa defense, especially like they're going to be, they're going to have to settle down very, very early in this game um, and just do and focus on the things that got them to this place, taking the ball away, being disruptive on the quarterback, tackling with physicality. Those are the same things that win a Super Bowl are the same thing that, that have put you in that Super Bowl. And it's just the teams who can focus on those the most the earliest that seemed to get settled in. Uh, by the way, you faced Bruce Arians many times. You faced Andy Reid m- multiple times. My gut feeling is Andy Reid's got a lot more motion. That's what I would think. If you is is that the difference between the two? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, you know, Bruce Arians wants to he wants to throw it down the field. You'll get those slot formations, max protection looks, take a shot, uh, and then the rest is kind of Tom Brady uh, just playing at the line of scrimmage based off of what the look the defense gives. When you get to Andy Reid and, and the Chiefs offense and, and uh, the enemy, you've got motions, you've got shifts, you've got shovel passes, you've got, you know, all kind of things, runs where you got gap scheme runs, zone runs, speed everywhere, orbit motion. You know, there's so many things that you've got to deal with with that offense that it, it definitely creates some problems with your eyes. And as soon as your eyes aren't in the right place, you got somebody behind your defense. Who do you like to win? You know, it's really hard to, to bet against Tom Brady in these things, but when I, I play both of these teams, what the Kansas City Chiefs present as a, as a unit from a play calling all the way down to the personnel on the field, it's just, it's just really hard to defend and, and really hard to win. And if their defense plays well, uh, which, I, which I expect them to, I, I see the Kansas City Chiefs winning this one. By the way, you are a filmmaker of some acclaim now, Oscar-nominated um... – Trying to get Oscar nominated. Okay, yeah. it says here you want uh, recently won a film festival. It's on Peacock. It's called Black Boys. It's Black History Month. What's it about? So it's really just diving into the humanity of black boys. Oftentimes, we only see kind of the the two polar opposites, whether it's the athletes and entertainers, or it's the negative stereotypes that we see in the media and news and things like that. And rarely do we ever just dive into the spectrum of humanity of black boys. And, and oftentimes it's ignored and, and it's reflected as early as our school age. You know, kids go to school, they read literature that doesn't talk about uh, black heroes. It has white heroes in it. They have less than 2% of uh, educators are black men. So you can go your entire time in school without seeing a black man in front of the room. And then what does that just already tell you about yourself uh, when it comes to leadership and, and things like that. So it's really just diving into that that spectrum of humanity of black boys, putting it on display and, and understanding how as we as a society have to do a better job of not not trying to, you know, uplift black boys, but really just believing that black boys are worthy and able to to just be themselves. Malcolm, you're I, I said this multiple times when uh, there was a lot of players uh, going out publicly uh, with the NFL. I love the manner in which you did it. You weren't trying to win arguments. You were trying to enlighten the league. And I thought it was a, you had a professionalism the way you did it that ingratiated yourself to fans, to people of color, to people that you had to often have strong disagreements with. And I just thought you held yourself to a standard that is so redeemable and you're really a credit to the league, and I love having you on the show. I know you got a lot of options, and you, and you chose us today, and I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. Malcolm Jenkins, a great player, a filmmaker, and he made his own suit. For guys like me, come on, made his own suit. I want to look good, too. I can't make my own suit. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.